الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم the question regarding who is the Sheikh al-Albani رحمه الله the Sheikh al-Albani is Muhammad Nasir al-Din al-Albani one of the most distinguished scholars of Islam in these times and he is considered one of the most distinguished but rather even the distinguished contemporary scholar of hadith and he is a known reference concerning the hadith convention and nomenclature some of the people of knowledge mentioned that he revived the era of Ibn Hajar al-Asqalani rahimahullah and Al-Hafiz ibn Kathir and others. He, Rahimahullah, was born in the year 1333 after Hijrah, corresponding to 1914 of the current era. Muhammad Nasr al-Din ibn, son of Nuh al-Albani born in the city of Ashkudra, the capital of the state of Albania then, from a poor family, raised in a poor family, but a family that was religious, a family that gave attention to knowledge. His father was a reference for people, teaching them and guiding them, Sheikh al-Albani immigrated with his father to the city of Damascus of the land of Asham, the greater uh, Syria area comprising contemporary Syria, Jordan, Palestine and Lebanon and some parts of western Iraq. To reside therein after the king of Albania moved to mesh his, his country in amongst the secular western states in Europe. Sheikh al-Albani completed his elementary school uh, in a city, in a, in a, a school known as uh, the charitable Isaf school in Damascus, in Damascus, in Damascus, with excellence. The father, his father, rahimahullah, had a special opinion concerning systematic uh, schooling in terms of the religious acquiring of the knowledge. So he decided not to let him continue under the system and he placed him under a, uh, a study program uh, focusing upon teaching him the Quran and Tajweed and linguistics, Arabic linguistics and the fiqh of Al-Madhab al-Hanafi because his father was a Hanafi rahimahullah. Sheikh al-Albani memorized on the hands of his father the noble Qur'an uh, in accordance with the recitation of Hafs an Asim. And he also took knowledge from a Sheikh Sayyid al-Burhani in the Fiqh al-Hanafi. And also took from him linguistics and in this time also he was keen to attend the Darus and lectures of the scholar Bahjat al-Bitar.
نعم نعم ذا ساوند از ذا ساوند اوكي هي توك فروم هيز فادر رحمه الله ذا بروفيشن اوف ووتش ريبير and he excelled in that and he was even famous for that and he used that as a means of earning and this profession gave him a great deal of time to review and study and his migration to Asham enabled him to acquire the Arabic language and also the legal uh, sources of knowledge and despite the direction of his father to focus upon imitating the uh, Al-Madhab Al-Hanafi the Hanafi school of thought and warning him not to indulge in studying the Hadith he went Uh, just for that meaning for the studying of hadith and its sciences and its uh, branches and this was when he was 20 years of age and he was uh, so much influenced by the research of a specialized magazine known as Majallat al-Manar the magazine of Manar which was published by a Sheikh Muhammad Rashid Rida Rahimahullah and the first hadith work he did was uh, transcribing the book Al-Mughni an Haml al-Asfar fi takhriji ma fi al-Ihya'i min al-Akhbar lil-Hafad al-Iraqi which was a book of verification of hadith concerning The, that of Al-Ghazali's book known as Ihya Ulum al-Din and also commenting on it this was a beneficial uh, opening for the Shaykh Rahimahullah because this made him very much occupied with the study of Hadith and its knowledge and so he became known amongst the people of knowledge in Damascus Uh, to the extent that the Al-Maktab uh, al-Zahiriya known as the uh, Al-Zahiriya library in Damascus uh, gave him a special uh, room there so as he can carry out his research also they made him a copy for the door of the library to come whenever he wished as to his works and writings this began <coughs> in the 20s and the first of his fiqh book which is based upon the evidence and uh, comparative Fiqh is the book, the famous book, Tahrir uh, al-Sajid, Min Ittikhad al Masajid, warning the Asajid, the Musalli, the from taking the uh, places of uh, uh, taking the Qubur, the graves as Masajid, and this is this was printed many times. And one of his uh, also great books, which is still a manuscript and hadith, which he began at this period, was Al-Kitab al rawd al-Nadir, uh, in organizing the Mu'jam of Al-Tabarani al sahir Now, the inclination of Sheikh al-Albani to uh, focus upon the hadith of the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, distinguished him in the impact it had upon him 
in terms of his methodology of adopting the Salaf's path that increased and intensified on this manhaj after he began working and reading in, uh, the books of uh, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah and ibn al-Qayyim and others from the renowned scholars of this uh, school of ad dawah Salafiyya. He carried this da'wah to Tawheed and Sunnah in Syria and visit many mashayikh in Damascus and there occurred between them many uh, discussions about the matters of Tawheed and following and regarding blind imitation of madhahib and innovations. He was faced by very strong opposition from the blind followers of the, of the madhahib and from the uh, bigoted uh, blind followers of Sufism and innovators. So they used to agitate the common Muslims against him and uh, accuse him and labeling him that he was a misguided Wahhabi. And they warned the people against him. This is at the time when uh, some of the known meritorious uh, scholars of the time in Damascus agreed with him and they, they incited him to continue on this da'wah. From them is Al-Allama Bahjat al-Bitar. Rahimahullah, and from them as Shaykh Abdul Fattah al-Imam who was heading the Society of Muslim Youth in Damascus and as Shaykh Tawfiq al-Bazra and others from the meritorious people of knowledge then. So he had at this time uh, he established the Rus classes twice weekly attended by seekers of knowledge and some of the university professors and from the books which he used to do uh, used to teach in these circles of knowledge no there was another uh, scholar from uh, from Halab, from Aleppo, a known scholar of Hadith, he took from him Ijaz, a certificate. Um, yeah. I have to, uh, just wait a minute because I need to get his name. I wrote his name here. Just a second. It's hard to find it, inshallah. Alhamdulillah <coughs> 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 Rabbil mean Yes. Uh, the name, <coughs> I found it, Alhamdulillah. Uh, the name is Al-Shaykh uh, Raghib Al-Tabbakh. Raghib Al-Tabbakh. He was a renowned scholar uh, in the city of Hama, in the city of Halab, Aleppo, in Syria. And he took from him Ijazah. الشيخ رحمه الله نعم so we continue إن شاء الله that نعم he took from him Yeah, but this is another benefit. That's what you need to know, and this is an additional benefit, alhamdulillah. And from the books which he used to teach 
in the circles of knowledge is the book of Fath al-Majid, which is the explanation and explanation of the book of Tawheed by Abd rahman bin Hassan, Abd rahman bin Hassan bin Muhammad bin Abd al-Wahhab. And he taught Al-Rawd al nadiyya which is the explanation of Sharh al-Durar al-Bahiyya al-Shawkani. The explanation by Siddiq Hassan Khan, Rahimahumullah. And he also taught Usul al-Fiqh, the foundation of Fiqh, principles of Fiqh, li Abdul Wahab Khalaf. And also he taught Al-Ba'ath al-Hathith, Sharh, Ikhtisar Ulum al-Hadith, li Ibn Kathir, which was explained by Ahmed Shakir, Rahimahumullah. And he taught Minhaj al-Islam, and he taught Fiqh al-Sunnah, the Sayyid Sabah. He used to travel on regular basis during one week of every month, then that also increased. He used to go to different, to different, uh, different uh, uh, provisions of the uh, Syria area in addition to some areas in the uh, Jordan before he settled in Jordan and this matter of travel uh, was used by his opponents who uh, ended up uh, reporting him to the rulers in Syria who put him in jail. Though he, Rahimahullah, was away from the matter of politics, he was jailed twice uh, before 1967 for one month in the Qala of Damascus. Uh, the castle of Damascus, the same uh, jail that accommodated uh, Sheikh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah. And he was released during the war of 1967 with other uh, political, quote-unquote, prisoners. And after the intensifying of the war he was returned to his jail another time, but not in the castle of Damascus, but in a place northeast of Damascus, known as the prison of Hasaka, where he spent eight months. During this period, he verified the summarized version of Sahih al-Bukhari by al-Hafiz al-Mundhari. And uh, he met many uh, known uh, people in the jail. Well, Sheikh Rahimahullah used to attend the circles of Al-Allama Muhammad Bahjat al-Bitar. And the College of Sharia ah in the University of Damascus chose him uh, to work on the hadith of Biyur commerce uh, that were relevant to the encyclopedia of Fiqh in Fiqh al Islami, which the university was uh, determined then to publish in 1955. And also, he was chosen one of the uh, members of the Committee of Hadith, which was established during the uh, union between Egypt and Syria in order to supervise the publication of the books of Sunnah and verify them. Also, al Jamia al Salafiyya, the, uh, the Salafiyya University in Banaras in India, uh, chose him to lead uh, the chair of hadith but he declined 
because it was difficult for him to uh, leave with his family and children because then the war erupted between uh, India and Pakistan. In the year 1388 after Hijra, uh, the Minister of Education in the Saudi Arabian Kingdom, Sheikh Hassan bin Abdullah al Sheikh, asked him to supervise the Department of Higher Ed Islamic Education at the University of Mecca. But due to his circumstances, he could not. He was chosen in nine, between 1395 until 1398 to, as a member of uh, the Supreme Council of the Islamic University in Medina. He accepted an invitation uh, to visit Spain and he gave an important lecture, a classical lecture, so beneficial. It was so important that it was printed uh, and it was entitled Al Hadith Hujjatun Binafsihi Fil Aqaidi Wal Ahkam. Hadith on its own is a proof in matters of creed and rulings. And this is a very, very useful uh, book. I urge everyone to have it. He visited the country of Qatar and gave some lectures in it particularly the lecture the distinguished lecture Manzilatul Sunnah Fil Islam the status of Sunnah in Islam he was also delegated by Al-Imam Al-Shaykh Abdul Aziz bin Baz Rahimahullah to give da'wah in Egypt, Morocco, and in England to the call for the Tawheed and Sunnah. He was invited to many conferences. He attended some and declined uh, many because of his uh, busy schedules in verifying many important matters of knowledge. He visited Kuwait and the, uh, the Emirates and he gave many lectures there. He visited also a number of European countries and met some of the Islamic <coughs> communities there and the Islamic Muslim students there and he also gave some beneficial talks. The Sheikh Rahimullah had very useful uh, publications and verifications exceeding 100, many of which were translated into many languages and many were printed many times. And from them is Irwa'ul Ghalil fi Tahriji Ahadithi Manar al -Sabil. also the Silsila of the Ahadith, the authentic narrations and also the silsila of narrations that are weak and fabricated and their influence, their bad influence on the Ummah. And also, Sifatu Salat al-Nabi, Min al-Takbir ila taslim the description of the Prophet Sallallahu prayer from Takbir to Taslim as if you see it. And in, year, in the year 1419, corresponding to 1999, the committee supervising the choice of the prize of King Faisal, the international King Faisal's prize for Islamic studies. Uh, this is a renowned uh, prize, was given to the Shaykh Rahimahullah and it was entitled Al-Juhud Al-Ilmiyya uh, Al-Lati عُنِيَتْ بِالْحَدِيثِ النَّبَوِي تَحْقِيقًا وَتَخْرِيجًا وَدِرَاسَةً It was focused, the subject matter of the prize then was the efforts uh, that were focused upon the Hadith uh, and Nabawi and it was given to a Shaykh 
Rahimahullah, Sheikh Muhammad Nasruddin Al Albani, because of the and respect of his and appreciation of his uh, great efforts and disregard in serving the hadith of the Prophet alayhi salatu as As to what the, the scholars mentioned about him, as Sheikh bin Baz rahimahullah, I have not seen, he said, anyone under the sky who is more knowledgeable in hadith in our times, like a Sheikh Muhammad, like Al-Allama Muhammad Nasr al-Din al-Albani. And when he was asked about the hadith of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the Shaykh said in Allah, and about the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that Allah sends uh, at the head of uh, every hundred years someone from this ummah to revive its deen. When he was asked, Shaykh bin Baz, about who is the revivalists of this century? He said, as Sheikh Muhammad Nasir al-Din al-Albani is the revivalist of this time, in my opinion, and Allah knows best. And our Sheikh Muhammad bin Salih al-Uthaymeen, rahimahullah, described him as the Muhaddith al-Asr. The Muhaddith of the era. And he said that the thing which I knew for about the Sheikh through, our, through my meetings with him, although they were few, that he was keen on acting in accordance with the Sunnah and uh, fighting the innovations and warding off them, whether this was in uh, the Aqeedah, the Creed, or in the actions. And as far as my reading of his books and his publications, then I knew that from him and that he is of vast knowledge in hadith in terms of the uh, riwayah, the, the reports, the texts and their narrators. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made his books beneficial to many people, our Shaykh rahimahullah added, from the side of knowledge and from the side of methodology and directing to the knowledge of hadith. And this is a great benefit to the Muslims, walillahi alhamd. And as far as his verifications of the hadiths, then this is a matter, and he, it was so evident. And Sheikh Muhammad Amir al-Shanqiq, rahimahullah, He used to respect the Sheikh al-Albani a lot. And whenever he saw him passing by while he, the Sheikh al-Shanqiti, was giving his class in the Prophet's uh, Masjid, he would stop his class and stand up and give greetings to the Sheikh. And the Sheikh Muqbil al-Wadi, rahimahullah, also reiterated the same meaning of Sheikh bin Baz concerning the Sheikh, that he is a revivalist of this time. And the last will that the Sheikh rahimahullah left was that he Will that for his wife and his children and his friends and everyone who loves him that if the news of his death, meaning the Sheikh's death, reaches and yet Uli to invoke Allah for me bil maghfira wa rahma to bestow mercy and to forgive me awal and first and that they should not 
wail or if they cry they should not raise their voices and that they should hasten to bury me and then he assigned a person to wash him by the name of Izzat Khadr Abu Abdullah Jari my neighbor and my faithful friend and whoever he his neighbor chooses to help him and that he in his will also he chose that the burial place be the closest so that people don't uh, don't uh, need to carry my funeral uh, in a in a car and that the grave should be in a old cemetery where it's most likely that it will not be dug and also he will then in this that whoever is in his uh, in the place where he dies knows of that that they should not inform anyone from my children who are outside the place in addition to others except after my <coughs> funeral so that emotions don't override and uh, lead to the delay of my funeral and he said Sa'inan al-Mawla asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the protector and helper and alqahu that I meet him وَقَدْ غَفَرَ لِي ذُنُوبِي مَا, قد... ما قَدَّمْتُ وَمَا أَخَّرْتُ that he forgives me my sins those that passed and those who that were that were before and they were after and then I will that all my library whether they printed or copied or manuscripts uh, written by my uh, handwriting or by others to be donated to the Islamic University library in the Medina because he said لِأَنَّ لِي فِيهَا ذِكْرَيَاتٌ حَسَنَةٌ فِي الدَّعْوَةِ إِلَى لِلْكِتَابِ وَالسُنَّةِ because in it there I have good memories in the calling for Allah in the calling for the book of Allah and his sunnah وَعَلَى مَنْهَجِ السَّلَفِ الصَّالِحِ in accordance with the path of the Salaf يَمَّا كُنْتُ مُدَرِّسًا فِيهَا when I was a teacher in it رَاجِيًا مِنَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى يَنْفَعَ بِهَا رُوَادَهَا also hoping from Allah that Allah make a benefit in those who come and use it as he subhanahu wa ta'ala made me benefit of it And then he made the dua, Rabbi awzani an ashkura ni'mataka allati an'amta alayya wa ala walidayy. Oh Allah, incite me and enable me to give thanks for your favor which you bestowed upon me and my parents. An amala salihan tarda, wa an amala salihan tarda, and that I do righteousness that is pleasing to you. Wa aslih li fi dhurriyati, and make my offspring Righteous in me to a lake, I return to you in repentance. Wa inni min al-Muslimin. I am from the Muslims, twenty-seventh of Jamal al-Ula, fourteen ten. This is the year he wrote it. He, rahimahullah, died before the day of Saturday, of the twenty-second of Jamal al-Akhir. 1420 corresponding to the 2nd of October 1999 and he was buried after Salat al-Isha Rahimallahu al-Shaykh Rahmatan wa Asya 
We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow his vast mercy upon the Sheikh and make of his works a benefit for him and for the Ummah. Wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam.